the quality of the SNPs is quite important. And I talked about um, GenTrain score. Actually, I'm going to, be, especially with this resolution, I'm going to choose some columns that I want to see, or basically choose columns I don't want to see. What happened to, to my column chooser here? There it is. <clears throat> I'm, I'm, I'm not interested, I don't know the chromosome, but that's some data that could have been uploaded if you know it. So I'm going to hide that. The position, I don't know where it is on there. The fraction, A, C, G, that's, actually that could be interesting. But then the rest is all data. And um, I'll keep the rest for now. Yeah. So GenTrain score really, like I said, is directly related to the call rate. So I can sort by that, and I'm going to sort from high to low. And it's not directly related. The highs are not always the best, and um, the lows are not always the best, or the lows are not always the worst. The reason the highs are not always the best, the, I'll click this, and, actually this was not bad. A lot of the times the highs are totally monomorphic markers, because it's 100% sure that those markers are monomorphic, you know, where you have only one one thing. So those are not useful. That's like the 100% with what, what Dave was talking about, for example. If you have 100% homology among your samples, probably not that good for markers. So what you're seeing, again, is one marker, see my two green lines, they're seeing to go off scale a bit on it. So you can look at markers, but the GenTrain score is a nice thing to look at in that you probably don't want to look at 8,500 markers, but if you sort by GenTrain, you can kind of look at a range. Basically, usually in GenTrain, the, there's, the ones in the middle tend to be the ones that are best, that are easiest and called the best. And that, so this this is a unique pattern where we have. I just randomly chose this, but to explain this pattern, we have two clusters of headers zygotes here. Is what it looks like. This is probably a duplicated locus, where we're see, where where we're amplifying two loci, and um, there's an underlying pattern that's giving you a shift in headers zygotes. Now, that's the way I've interpreted that, and I probably wouldn't want to use that as a, as a routine marker. So I'll give you a good example. And so in potato, we see that all the time. We expect five clusters in potato. So you can go through each of the SNPs, and let's say what we're going to go through is try to define the homozygous and heterozygous class for each of the markers. But what's, so what you see in the SNP table, the full table, is you see the SNPs, you see, and you see the genotype, and GT type, that's actually the genotype, and everything is A, A, B, B. The A allele in this case is always, depends on the way we put in the SNP, it's going to be, oh, I'm sorry, we're going to catch it somewhere else. The A allele is the first allele we told it it had when we, did, when we submitted the sequence. If we called it an AG SNP, the allele is an A, and the G allele is a B, and so on. And that, and you can capture that. I'll show you in another table um, that data, um, exactly what that is. So sample. So this lists the samples basically across the top, and what they are M82, and basically their genotypes uh, for for each of the SNPs uh, that you have. So this is painful to look at, and I'm going to show you other ways to, to look at this. One of the nice tables it does put out, there's a SNP tab table, and this is more of a statistics table, summary table for all the SNPs. And so this is kind of interesting. I'm going to use my column chooser and knock out some things that I don't think are interesting. Um, chromosome we don't know, just so we see more things. Um, we see AA frequency, that's probably pretty handy to know. Call frequency, handy to know. Um, auxiliary, we don't have anything in that field. PC stands for progeny. Um, let's look at this equal. It's basically progeny, no, parent progeny, parent child relationships. So, in a, I don't know if we'll use that that much in plants so much, but you can think about it as um, parent progeny correlations, that kind of thing. So, if you know the parent is an A, AA, the progeny better be AA as well, so it's correlation between progeny and parent. And so, so I'm not, 
I'm just going to leave it at, let's see. No, I'm going to hide a few more. Replication errors. This is something if you know you have replicates and you label it accordingly, it'll tell you how often, you know, what percentage of those replicates are really the same, and so on. So that's that's that could be something that you could use. Ten percent GC, fifty percent GC. GC is Gen Train score. It's not GC content, and I'm going to go with that. Okay, position numbers. So what it'll do, it'll do a chi-square test on these frequencies. So the number of A alleles, number of B alleles, chi-square test with those. So they're all significant in this case. And you, and you can define what the test is. The call frequency, so now this is by SNP instead of by sample. 98% of the samples in this SNP were called. This is a good SNP. Okay, so 98% were in clusters, essentially. You can change that. Uh, quite easily. I mean, if I, I pivot, well, I'll use one that's a little easier to, to break. Uh, these are all too good. Well, for example, I'll just Kate take this. Yeah, it didn't work. By doing that, I dropped the percent calls. This black guy went down. Okay, so. Every time you change your clusters, you change your percent calls for a given SNP. So if you leave any out, obviously the percentage goes down. And all I'm doing is holding the shift key down. I can move things or I can expand things. Minor allele frequency, the B allele is always the minor allele. Um, in this case, I'm sorry, no, the A allele, I take it back. The A allele is always the, the minor allele. So that should be, um, if you have no heterozygotes, obviously it'll equal your AA frequency. And here's what I talked about. This is the SNP, this is the sequence difference, or the allele, yeah, the, basically the base change at that position that we're interrogating. The A allele has the A genotype, the B allele has a G genotype. And so it tells you what the SNP base is in the sequence. The base of that, so the sequence is actually available online at the SoulCap website right now. Um, so if you go to the tomato genotype, you can download the basis of all the SNPs and actually even the annotation, the, the predicted gene, and so on. You know, so the file that we gave Illumina to design these is actually available online right now. Um, and, and that's important once you get into asking what the sequence is. So number of no calls, basically number of missing data points um, over here. So some nice um, some nice uh, <clears throat> statistics that you may want to export. 